What's up everybody, Dane Jackson here, and today in this video I'm gonna be going through our newest creek boat, the Narvana. In this video I'm gonna be talking about the design features, what we designed this boat for, and why we are all so fired up on this boat, and we know you will be too. So let's get into it. We designed this boat at 810. We felt that 810 was a really nice combo of being a little bit shorter so that way it's easier to boof, easier to maneuver, a little lighter for carrying and just paddling on the water, but it also still has that length that you want to make sure that there's still enough speed for getting over features, planning away from drops, and general enjoyment down the water. Now let's talk about the width of the boat. Not only did we keep this boat nice and wide for stability, but we made sure to carry the width really nicely through the middle of the boat, giving you a much more stable and balanced package, giving you also a much higher floating boat. Also, by having that width through the middle of the boat, it gives you much more planing surface for carrying your speed over features, skipping away from drop, and just staying on top of the water. But when you get to the stern, we made sure to taper that stern in really nicely toward the end. And the reason for that is that whenever you need to maneuver or get on edge to boof, there's nothing there that's going to stop your ability to lift that bow nice and high. But then as you move towards the bow, you will notice that this bow stays a little bit wider than we traditionally have in our creek boats, and there's a good reason for that. The reason why we kept this bow a little wider, especially up towards the tip, is that by having that little extra width, this bow wants to start lifting a lot earlier than if it was narrow. So whenever you're landing booth, carrying your speed through features, that bow wants to start lifting as soon as the front of the boat touches the water. That not only allows you to have your bow stay drier in places you never would have expected, but even if your bow does go underwater a little bit, it wants to start coming out faster, meaning you're going to be carrying your speed through a lot more features than you ever have. That little bit of extra width with that extra planing surface also means that this bow is going to stay on top of the water so much more than you've ever experienced. Creeks, big water, whatever it may be, this bow wants to stay on top of the water at all times, giving you the driest bow you have ever experienced. So that's the width profile. Now let's get into the rocker. Not only do we give this boat a ton of rocker to make sure that that bow is staying on top of the water at all times, it's the easiest to boof boat you've ever paddled, but we actually carry the rocker profile through the entire boat. That, combined with the wider package, means this is the highest floating boat you have ever sat in. This boat feels like you are levitating over everything. By having that wider, balanced midsection, combined with the rocker going all the way through the boat, that gets these ends high and dry out of the water. By being so high out of the water, not only is that bow, again, staying way drier, but you're gonna have way more confidence because you're gonna be floating over all the white water a lot more than you've ever experienced. We made the water line incredibly short and with so much less of the boat in the water gives you so much more confidence that you're gonna be able to keep this boat in control. Not only is it so quick to turn and maneuver, but also so little of this boat is in the water, meaning so little of the boat is gonna get pushed around. There's nothing to make the bow or the stern get pushed around in a way that you don't want, whether it's cross current, spoiled. This boat just feels like you're constantly in control, giving you so much more more confidence in any type of white water. A few more things that are so nice about how high this boat floats on the water and how little the boat is in the water is one, when you need to boof off of shallow boofs, whether it's a drop, a waterfall, or anything where you might be scraping the lip, with so little of the boat in the water, you're gonna have such little contact that you're gonna be able to carry your speed out and away even if you're hitting the lip. But not only that, when you want to boof off of rocks, whether just for fun to try to get as much air as possible, or you need to boof off a of rock to boof into an eddy, again, so little of that boat contact that you're able to just launch off of it. So that's the rocker profile. Now let's get into the actual hull itself. We still wanted to make sure you had all that nimbleness side to side. We wanted to make sure that when you're ferrying, surfing, carving, zipping around, we wanted to make sure you still have all those fun features of running the white water on top of all that confidence. So we designed the hull with that in mind, and we made sure to still keep our full-on drop chine for maximum carving ability. And even though this boat is super high rockered with such a short water line, this boat still carves amazing. So whether you're carving out of eddies, on waves, this boat is still super dynamic and fun to paddle. We kept the hull nice and flat out to the stern to make sure you got maximum planing surface when skipping out of boob, carrying your speed over features, but we went ahead and smoothed out the hull up towards the bow. We wanted to make sure that even if you land this boat a little bit on edge off of a boof or something like that, by having not only that wider surface area on the bow, but also by having it a nice smooth surface, it wants to just settle in and still carry its speed even if you don't land perfectly flat. So that's the hull, now let's talk about the deck. Not only do we want this boat to float as high like we talked about, but we wanted to make sure you had all the volume needed on the deck for utmost confidence. We kept the volume high in the bow, so this bow wants to resurface incredibly fast, even if your bow doesn't stay bone dry. We kept the volume through the middle to make sure there's nothing there that's low that could grab you on eddy lines, boiled. But then in the stern, we made sure to keep the volume high as well to make sure that you have full confidence that you're not going to back under this boat. But we also designed the stern to make sure that there's nothing in the way whenever you need to do any type of maneuver or boot. 
Not only do we keep the volume in the deck for confidence, but we also want to make sure you are as comfortable as possible no matter what size paddle you are. So that's the overall design of this boat. Now let's get into some of the finer details because we wanted to make sure that we looked at every single thing we could and try to find ways to improve upon them. Starting at the stern at the tip, we wanted to make sure we designed not only the most structured stern, but also designed the parting line specifically in mind that even if you spend year round stern tapping, you will have full confidence that this boat is going to last and not break on you. Moving up from that, we went ahead and redesigned our drain plug area, making sure that you have enough space to get your fingers in and get that drain plug out with ease. Moving up from that, we went back to the full grab handles back here. That means whether you're lifting a boat for a portage, passing it onto a car, getting out in a hard spot on the river, you have full grab handles back there to grab onto, making it a lot easier. These are also really nice to have in the case of like a pin or any safety situation like that. Moving forward from the grab handles, we have two things that we've never done on our boats before. We added our molded in rear wall holder. And the reason for this is to give more structure and make sure that stern wall is gonna stay in place no matter how much you use it. And you don't have to worry about the wall potentially tipping over. And the other thing we've never done in our boat before is we actually didn't polish under the cockpit rim, giving it a little bit of texture rather than a smooth finish. It's not uncomfortable to the touch, but what that does is anyone that's gotten a fresh boat and is about to go run any type of whitewater where they feel like maybe their skirt could come off, sometimes you'll actually go and just scratch up the cockpit rim a little. Now, even if this boat is fresh out of the bag, you don't have to worry about that skirt coming off. Moving forward, we still have our full grab handles on both ends of the boat. On the bow, we actually moved the front grab handle back just slightly to give a little bit more space from the grab handle to the tip of the bow and actually peak the deck ever so slightly to give it more structure. So in the case you do piton, this boat will have more structure and it's less likely to fold on you. Another thing we did with the front and back grab handles, we kept them sideways. And the nice thing about that is whether you're dragging a boat, passing a boat, lifting a boat up by having them sideways, the nice comfortable grip and you don't have to worry about your fingers getting jammed when trying to lift the boat. Just gives you a much more comfortable experience whether dragging or passing the boat. Another thing we did is we wanted to make sure that you had the most structured sidewall of this boat we could. So not only at the cockpit rim did we make sure to give it a nice structure to give it stiffness, but we also carried the stern deck lines all the way to the hip. So that way no matter how much abuse you put this boat through, you won't have to worry about it folding there. So that's the outside, now let's get into the inside of the boat. This boat will come standard with our full whitewater outfitting with our Unishock shock absorbing bulkhead, our easy to adjust seat, the Sherlock backband, our fully adjustable bees knees, giving you a little extra hook on your thigh pad for those that want it. But we also heard your feedback and made a few small changes to our outfitting. Number one, we put bungees in between the front wall and the seat. So it's a place you can put something like your rope, your water bottle, and it's not in the way of being able to adjust your seat or your bulkhead. Another adjustment we made is on our hip pads, we moved the buckle from the back of the hip pad to the front. So now when you're getting in the boat, you won't have to worry about your back band catching on that buckle. We also added a second strap to our hip pads. Now the hip pads aren't gonna pop up. They're not gonna move around as you're paddling. They're gonna stay exactly where you like it all day. So that's the Narvana. We, in this boat, you're gonna have the most confidence you've ever had. You're gonna have the driest bow you've ever experienced. You're gonna stay on top of the water in places you never thought possible. You're gonna feel like you're levitating over waves, curlers, features, whatever it is. This will be the highest floating, driest bow, most confidence inspiring boat you've ever paddled. So you have that width and stability, but this boat is still nimble side to side, meaning that carving, ferrying, surfing, whatever it is, is still super easy and fun. This will be the easiest to boof boat you've ever been in, whether you're doing straight boofs, late boofs, whip boofs, this is as easy as it gets. And even though this boat is high floating, high rocker, this boat is not slow. You still have all that speed you want for confidence in whatever type of whitewater or just enjoyment when skipping out of boofs and things like that. With the way this boat carries the speed away from drop, that lands soft. One final question I'm sure you have, because it's a Jackson standard, is it easy to roll? And the answer is yes. This boat is incredibly easy to roll. With that short water line and the high rocker, as soon as you go to roll this boat, this thing wants to come up right away with ease. Because we want everyone to have access to our designs, I'm very excited to say we will have three sizes of the Narvana. So if you want the driest bow, the easiest to paddle boat, the most confidence inspiring, while still the most fun you've ever had out there, you've got to check out the Narvana. So that's the Narvana and all the reasons why we are just so fired up at Jackson Kayak to have this boat. And I cannot wait to get on the water with you guys in this boat.